Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and the Crypto.org chain mainnet is now live. So I'm going to show you how to convert your CRO, store it in the DeFi wallet, and stake it for up to 50% APY. So let's get started. All right, so I'm here on the blog page on the announcement of the uh, mainnet that it's gone live. And uh, they've got some information here about how you can stake your CRO. I'll put a link to this down in the description below. Uh, I'll also put a link to this blog post on the roadmap for the development of the CRO mainnet uh, chain, the crypto.org chain. So you can check that out as well. But today, let's get started staking our CRO in the DeFi wallet. All right, so I'm going to launch my Crypto.com DeFi wallet. Now, if you haven't got your DeFi wallet set up yet, I've got a great video on how you do that. Get that thing set up and get it linked to your Crypto.com account so that you can easily transfer CRO between the two of them. I'll show you how to withdraw CRO from your Crypto.com app into this DeFi wallet. And I'll also show you how to transfer some CRO from a regular Ethereum wallet if you have some stored in one of your own wallets. Uh, so I'll show you both ways. So let's go over to the Crypto.com app. All right, and you can see that I have some CRO in my account. If you're a Crypto.com account user and you've been generating bonuses and using your uh, Visa card to pay for items, you're gonna get CRO rewards or you can just buy CRO outright if you want to do that using the Crypto.com app. I've got a great video on how you get set up using the Crypto.com app. I'll put a link to that up there as well. So I'm going to do a withdrawal. So I'm going to tap Crypto.com coin up here in my accounts. And I'll tap transfer and withdraw. All right, now notice here I've got the Crypto.com DeFi wallet set up in my app. As I mentioned, I have a good video on how you get the DeFi wallet set up and linked to your Crypto.com account. So we'll just tap that wallet, right? And I'm going to withdraw CRO. And then I'll just tap max there. You can send as little or as much as you want. If you've never done it before, I would suggest testing a small amount first but I've done this before. I'll hit withdraw. All right, now it's gonna go from my crypto.com account into my CRO wallet. And notice that it's ERC20 CRO. Once we get it in the DeFi wallet, we'll convert it to mainnet. Let's hit confirm here. I'll need to provide my two-factor authentication from my Google Authenticator. So I'll just go over to my Google Authenticator. Crypto.com is my first code there, I'll tap I'll copy that code into my clipboard. I'll slide back over to Crypto.com app, and then I'll hit Paste and Continue. All right, and then the withdrawal has been submitted. I'll tap to dismiss this. My CRO balance goes to zero. I should get an email alert on this as well. There it is. All right. So now I can just go back over to the wallet and wait for the CRO to come in. It shouldn't take very long. All right, and you can see there that the CRO has arrived in my wallet there. I've got my balance at the top. If we want to earn staking rewards, we're going to need to convert this into mainnet CRO. I'm just going to tap where it says crypto.com coin and my balance just to open up that account. And you'll notice there that they've got that CRO migration tool right on the top. So I'll just tap that. All right, and we'll go into the migration tool. We'll hit continue. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the max conversion. I'll hit continue. Ah, okay. So I am gonna to need to have a little bit of Ethereum in this wallet in order to make this conversion, right? Because the Ethereum mainnet uses Ethereum for its gas or its fees. So I'm gonna put a little bit of Ethereum in this wallet. All right, you'll notice I've got a zero balance of Ethereum here. So uh, I'll put some Ethereum in here for this conversion. You may have some Ethereum in a, a different wallet 
or you can purchase a little bit of Ethereum on crypto.com and, and withdraw it if you want to do it that way. Yeah, I'll show you the quick and easy way first. So we'll just go uh, back to the home screen. We'll hit trade. Uh, we'll hit buy. And we'll uh, choose Ethereum. All right, I'll go ahead and just throw about 100 bucks worth, worth of Ethereum in there. I probably won't need all of that, but just to be on the safe side, just give myself a little breathing room. Uh, if, I, if I don't use it in the conversion, it'll still be in my wallet. So I'll go ahead and hit buy ETH. I'll uh, acknowledge that I understand the card fee. If you don't have a Crypto.com account yet, they're waiving fees for the first 30 days for all debit and credit card transactions. So you might want to check that out if you don't have an account yet. I'll hit continue here. I'll hit confirm. Okay, and there we go. Got some Ethereum in the account. So now I'll go over to accounts and I'll tap Ethereum and transfer. I'll tap withdraw again and I'll do the same thing I did before. I'll use the uh, crypto.com DeFi wallet. I'll tell them it's Ethereum and I'll just go ahead and send that max Ethereum into the DeFi wallet. We'll hit withdraw here. And we'll hit confirm. And I'm going to need to put my two-factor authentication in again from Google Authenticator. We'll hit continue here. And done. All right. So I just put some Ethereum in the Crypto.com DeFi wallet so that I can do that mainnet uh, conversion because it does require a gas fee. I'll head back over to my DeFi wallet and wait for that Ethereum to come in. You know, one of the reasons that we're converting over to the CRO mainnet is to avoid Ethereum gas fees. So we're going to say goodbye to gas fees after this last conversion, right? Once we get all our CRO converted from uh, Ethereum mainnet over to the CRO mainnet, we're going to have much lower fees. I noticed down here that there's a little icon that uh, shows you how to do this fairly easily. So uh, it says get ETH ready for gas fees. So I'll just tap that. Notice you can kind of do it from the wallet side if you want, receive ETH. And uh, they give you the address of the wallet if you want to transfer Ethereum from somewhere else. So uh, if you wanted to buy Ethereum on a different cryptocurrency exchange and transfer it to this wallet, they give you a receiving address. Or if you wanted to transfer it from one of your own wallets where you were already holding Ethereum, you could use this receiving address to do the transfer. All right, and you can see that the Ethereum has arrived in my wallet as well. All right, so now I've got the Ethereum that I need for my gas fees to do this conversion. Let's go back over to Crypto.com Coin. All right, we'll go ahead and tap the Migration tool again. Uh, we'll hit Continue. I'll go ahead and max it out again. I'll hit Continue. All right, and there we go. We're all ready. Let's hit the uh, uh, tick that off for Terms and Conditions. Now notice here that it might take, it, it could take up to 48 hours to do this conversion. So uh, you're going to need to be patient. Wow. And the Ethereum fees are going to be high. Before I do this, I'll go ahead and transfer CRO from my own wallet so I can just get the whole transaction done in one fell swoop instead of paying twice. Since it's going to cost me uh, about $100 in fees. So I'll go ahead and put some more uh, CRO in this wallet. So I'll go back over to the CRO. I'm going to tap Receive here. I've got the ERC20 version of CRO stored in my wallet, so I want to make sure that I give it an Ethereum-based address. So I need to tap ERC20 over here so that I get the ERC20-based address. And I'll go ahead and share this with myself so that I will have access to this address from my computer, which is where I'm going to be using my wallet. So I'll hit share and I'll just email that one to myself. All right, so I'll go ahead and launch my Ledger Live. All right, so I'm gonna go into my Ethereum wallet here 
and scroll down to my crypto.com coin and I want to do a send to my DeFi wallet so in this case I'm just gonna take that address of the wallet that I emailed to myself alright there's that address notice it's a ERC 20 based address it starts with 0x All right, let's paste that into our uh, wallet here you can also eyeball that address just to make sure so if you check in your wallet you can just eyeball that address you, all the way through just double check the address see how it ends 849 BB so you know you're sending it to the right address we'll hit continue and I'll just go ahead and send it all into my DeFi wallet because I want to stake this alright I'm gonna go ahead and send the max I would suggest that you send a small amount first to double check if you've never done this before, don't send the mother load until you're absolutely sure you know what you're doing. Well, let's hit continue here. I'll hit continue again. And I'm going to need to sign this transaction with my device. All right, so my device is saying to review the transaction. There's the amount, the address I'm sending to, the fees, and accept and send. All right, and there we go. We can view the status there of it. This, we're sending it to our wallet. One wallet to another. All right, I'm done with the device. I can get rid of that. Just put it down. Disconnect it if I want to. All right, you can see the CRO has gone out from my wallet. Now we'll just go back over to the DeFi wallet and wait for it to arrive. Hopefully that uh, Ethereum that I put in the wallet is going to be enough for my uh, conversion. If not, I'll throw some more Ethereum in there. It's not the end of the world. Ethereum fees are really high right now. I'll walk you through this. You may encounter these issues yourself. So you can watch how I deal with them. All right. And there you can see that that uh, additional CRO has arrived in my wallet. Let's uh, check that conversion and make sure I have enough Ethereum for all this. All right, so I'm going to go back to the migration tool. We'll hit continue here. I'll max it out again. We'll hit continue. All right, and notice it's going to be about the same, the Ethereum fee, uh, 0 0.0324. You know what? I'm going to put more Ethereum in here just to make sure. I don't want to risk that something goes wrong during this transaction. So I'll go ahead and put a little bit more Ethereum in here, just to be on the safe side. I can do that from uh, my wallet. I already have the Ethereum address. All right, I'm just going to transfer some Ethereum from my Ledger wallet into the uh, DeFi wallet. We'll hit Continue. I'll just do 0.1 Ethereum, just to make sure. Um, let's hit Continue here. We'll hit Continue again. I'm going to authorize this transaction on my uh, device. All right, review transaction. There's the amount of ETH. There's the address I'm sending to. There's the fees. And I'll hit accept and send here. All right, done there. Now you might be wondering, you know, why are you putting so much Ethereum in here? Uh, it estimated the amount and it was less than what you had in the wallet, but the key word there is estimate. They were just estimating the amount of Ethereum uh, required for the gas fees for this migration, and it could be more, right? And I just barely had a little bit more than their estimate, so I'm going to put an additional amount of Ethereum in the wallet just to make sure whatever's left over will still be in my wallet, so it's no big deal. Ethereum gas fees are very high on the Ethereum network, that is why we're doing this migration so that we can uh, use a different chain with lower fees. So, like I said, there is method to my madness. I'll just wait for that additional Ethereum to arrive in my wallet. Okay, so I've put the additional Ethereum in my wallet to make sure that I have enough gas fees for this migration. Uh, you may accuse me of being uh, having an overabundance of caution, but that never hurt anything. 
You want to make sure that you don't do these kind of things haphazardly or carelessly. When you're dealing with crypto, you have to be very precise. And you want to make sure that you have covered all your bases. All right, so let's go into the migration tool again. Get this thing going finally. So I'll tap on the CRO coin. All right, I'll go to the CRO migration tool. We'll hit continue. I'll, do a, I'll go ahead and do max again. We'll hit continue. All right, and there we go. There's the estimate of the conversion. I've got more than enough Ethereum in there just to cover this. And note, note, it's going to take up to two days, 48 hours, so you're going to have to be patient here. So I'll tap this little uh, box for the terms and conditions. I'll confirm the migration down there at the bottom. I'll tap that button. Let's go over to our Google Authenticator. Get that Crypto.com wallet confirmation. There it is, got that crypto.com wallet code. I may not be able to paste it in there, so I'm just going to quickly memorize it when I scroll back over there. I'll let it refresh so I got a clear. Uh, okay, there it is, 873480. All right, and there we go. My request has been submitted. My request to migrate is pending. All right, so uh, as they mentioned, it could take uh, one hour, it could take 48 hours. So you're going to need to be patient on this. And I'll continue the video after mine has been completed. And I'll share with you the amount of time it took for mine. Okay, so we can check in our CRO migration uh, in the CRO wallet, the CRO section of the wallet. You'll see here that it's got that CRO migration listed there with a little clock icon down below, down here. So that would indicate that uh, it's still processing. But if we tap on that, we can. Uh, it gives us an update of what's going on, that it's pending. You can also view the details and check status on the Ethernet Explorer. So if we tap that, you can see that the Ethereum transaction went through successfully. So uh, it's just migrating onto the uh, CRO chain. And once that's complete, you will see the converted CRO mainnet coin in your wallet. So you'll have to wait for that. So, uh, but at least you can check on the front end that the, uh, the original Ethereum transaction went through. Oh, okay. So I just did a refresh, and uh, it's now showing my CRO balance. Uh, but notice that it says crypto.org coin, right? It's been converted now. So you can see there that I've received the CRO into uh, my CRO wallet. I'm assuming that you could still convert more uh, ERC-20 based CRO if you wanted to send it to the Ethereum address of this wallet and then you could convert that as well. And that it will show up as a separate balance uh, if, you, if you had more CRO somewhere else or uh, if you managed to purchase some CRO uh, ERC-20 based CRO on a different exchange or whatnot, you'd still be able to put more into this wallet and then convert it. All right, so now that we've got our converted CRO, that's on the mainnet chain. Let's check out the earn program. So I'm gonna tap earn down there in the bottom corner, in the right bottom corner. I'll hit start earning. And notice you can stake more than just CRO in this wallet. But of course, CRO has the highest uh, PA. I'm not sure what PA means. Something close to uh, APY. <laughs> All right, but that's the current interest rate you're going to get, all right, if you want to stake your CRO. So I'm going to tap that. Let's go over to our CRO, and let's see. I should be able to max this out. Oh, there it is down there uh, above the number three. I can hit max amount, just stake it all, right, and then hit the stake button. All right, and there's my the amount of my stake, the validator, 
I don't get, it doesn't look like I choose the validator. Yeah, it looks like it's always New Shepard. I don't know that there's any more than one. They definitely don't have a way to choose your validator. I don't see it. But that's fine. Let's hit that. All right, let's go ahead and confirm that stake. Ah, oh, there is an unbonding period. Okay, 28-day unbonding period. So you'll need to keep that in mind. If you decide to unstake, you will have to wait 28 days before you have access to your coins. This is fairly common. Uh, it's pretty much the same on just about any other native staking platform. On DOT, um, Cosmos, Tezos, you're going to have an unbonding period when you unstake your coins. All right? This is to give the validators time to compensate for coins that they're uh, applying to their nodes. And when you unstake it, they need time to adjust so that they can compensate their nodes when people unbond, right? It's just part of the ecosystem. All right, so I'm going to just hit don't, oh, well, <laughs> I'll leave that so I can always be reminded of that. So I'll go ahead and hit proceed here. And I need my two-factor authentication for my crypto.com wallet, which is over in my uh, Google Authenticator. All right, so I'll just, uh, I'll go ahead and tap it, 157134. See if it lets me do this. Oh, I can't. Yeah, I just hit paste. Pasted it right in there. Okay, so now my stake request is pending. And uh, I can view the details here. And I can view the status on the Explorer. And this should take me to the CRO Explorer, which is kind of interesting. All right, looks like my status is confirmed already. Let's go back over here. And it's got on there staking CRO. It's going to give me an estimate of my uh, current earnings. And like I said, you can uh, unstake at any time, but you will have to wait 28 days to get access to your funds back. All right. All right, and then you can stake more than just CRO. You've got uh, several different cryptocurrencies that you can stake on this platform. All right, and then after you've waited a while for the staking to take effect, uh, you're going to see the readout as follows. You're going to see your uh, crypto.org coin will be empty, right, because they're being staked, and you will see your total showing up in the DeFi Earn Assets section, right? So you can tap on that. And it'll show you, uh, you know, how much CRO you're staking. And if you go over here to view earnings, it's going to give you, uh, you know, an updated readout of the amount you're staking and your estimated earnings in U.S. dollars. All right, so that's what it's going to look like. And then, you know, you can always go back and add to this or subtract from it if you need to. As I mentioned, you will have an unbonding period if you decide to stop staking of 28 days. So please don't forget that. All right, And if you're here, you can just tap those three dots up there to get to the unstake if you wish to unstake. Just be aware it'll be 28-day unbonding period. All right, so I showed you how to deposit CRO into this wallet. I showed you how to add some Ethereum in order to cover your transaction fees when you did your conversion. Showed you how to convert from ERC-20 based CRO into mainnet CRO. And then I showed you how to stake. So if you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.